And it's time for Korea On Demand, and we've made a full-on cycle. Finally, back joining us in our program is Austin Gibbons, the man behind his YouTube channel, Eating What Is Given. Austin, good to see you again, buddy. SJ, so good to see you. Thank you for having me again. And by the way, congratulations on the new baby, being a new father again. That's yeah, awesome. It's been, uh, it's been a month, I guess, uh, since she was born, but it's also been a month since we last talked. So. I know, yeah. It was about the time of our last uh, episode. I'm glad to see you're still alive and your eyes are open. You're not uh, <sighs> too tired. <laughs> I got, I have canker sores all over my mouth. Uh, yeah, it, it's tiring, but it's also rewarding, right, uh, with all of this. By the way, um, you had a chance to meet my wife. Uh, you had a chance to meet my son. Uh, and I remember at the time, because uh, my son's name is Aaron. Yes, and, uh, you know, sure. and his Korean, Korean name is Aaron. And uh, I gave him an English name, uh, Aaron. And then you were saying your brother's name is Aaron. And uh, as I was watching your video uh, this past week, uh, the the foodie adventure that you went with your brother and your brother Aaron, I have to say this: Are you guys twins? <laughs> Everybody thinks so. We look alike, but he's actually two years older than me. Um, but yeah, spitting image. Um, I think it's going to confuse some of my YouTube viewers. They won't know who's talking, me or my brother. I I, I kid you not, ladies and gentlemen. The only way to Find the figure out the difference between Austin and his brothers by the glasses, the, the shape of the glasses. You guys look so familiar, so alike. But uh, I mean, it was, it's just an incredible uh, journey that you guys had. But uh, you've been here for quite a bit. Is, is this the first time that he's visited you here in South Korea? So I've been living here for eight years, and this was actually the first time my brother visited me. And surprisingly, it's the first time he's ever left America. So wow. this is the only uh, experience he's had with Korean food, the only experience he's had outside of the U.S. So it was kind of a, a kind of a huge undertaking for me to host him as his first journey outside of America. So. And so I'm guessing then that, uh, I mean, considering, I mean, it's his first trip to Korea, but has he had any experience with Korean food in uh, Indiana, right? I mean, that's, that's where your ho home state is. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the thing, like in Indiana, there are a few Korean restaurants. And when I visited America, I tried to cook some Korean food for ah, my family. That's right. Um, but that's pretty much his only experience. And by the way, after he came to Korea and started eating food, eating the food here, after a couple of days, he told me, Austin, your cooking is nothing compared <laughs> to Korean food. So I said, thanks, brother. I, I expected that, you know, Korean people making Korean food. Must be better than me for sure. I although though you have to really give credit to Austin because if you've seen him, uh, he's done a, a couple of episodes where he was visiting back home. I think for the holidays, you did one where you uh, did a Korean barbecue for your family, and then you did one where you made your own chokbar and yeah. uh, posam and uh, yours kind of style. I, it all looks fantastic, and I'm, I'm sure it tasted good. But it is always hard to. Kind of beat the original, right? Of uh, course. And yeah, he's we... my older brother, so he's always giving me a little bit of a hard time, you know. Sure, sure, sure. So, <laughs> I mean, it's now that he's visiting you and uh, he's in your uh, neck of the woods now. Uh, did you take uh, go easy on him or uh, what, what was your yeah. plan? What were you planning to do during his visit? Okay, well, as I said, he's my older brother, so I felt like I could uh, be a little bit merciless on him. <laughs> kind of use it to sort of test test some things out. So it's not like hosting a friend or a guest. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, my brother is still going to be my brother, even if I introduce him to some crazy food. So, but for this trip, I made a goal. So I've been living in Korea for eight years and he was visiting just for eight days. Wow. So I wanted to share my eight day hardcore deep dive into Korean food. And my goal was to make my brother fall in love with Korean food. And maybe uh, if I go through our itinerary, talk a little bit about what we ate. Maybe if some people are planning to visit Korea or are in Korea, maybe you could consider this my eight-day crash course Korean food itinerary, I guess. So the eight days that he was visiting you, for eight days straight, you guys went just on a food tour. Absolutely. We, we were merciless. My wife and I, we were meticulous in our planning. 
I wanted to uh, just introduce him. Basically, you know, the places that made me fall in love with Korean food, mm-hmm. I wanted to show him and see his reaction. And sort of uh, accelerated. you have to yeah. understand, if you've watched uh, his uh, videos, uh, he didn't stay in Daejeon. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, he went to some of the spots in Daejeon, but uh, he, he's, he's traveled around in those eight days. Let's talk about the plan. Let's get into this. Okay. The, the eight day oh. journey of the Gibbons brothers. Uh, what was it like? <laughs> All right. So the plan was to start in Daejeon. It's my home here in Korea. Uh, a lot of people when they visit Korea would say there's no re like they don't visit Daejeon, but personally, I think it's a mistake, right? If it's your first time in Korea, um i would say travel as much as possible and daejeon is centrally located can kind of act as a good launching point to the rest of the country i think more so than seoul seoul is kind of tucked away up in the corner so starting in daejeon was no problem but from daejeon we went to jeonju then to jirisan then to busan then we stopped by gyeongju and went up to seoul for the final two days of the trip all right so you've basically did a whole loop around Korea. Um, This is where it gets interesting because, I mean, you went to great places. Uh, Man, Jeonju, uh, obviously known for food. I recently went there on a solo trip. I was just amazed uh, by how great even the simplest foods are. But you have to choose correctly. There's oh so many choices and to only choose a certain amount here. Uh, what, What were the food choices? All right. So night one, he gets off the airplane. He's feeling a little bit jet lagged. But my strategy was to just disorient him right away. So our first meal was at a place called Wanjo Dweet Goki mm-hmm. in Daejeon. I want to make sure I emphasize Dweet Goki. It sounds a little bit like Bulgogi. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, what I mean, what did, what's your take on Dweet Goki? So I'm guessing that, I mean, Wanjo meaning original, right? Uh, we've yeah. heard that word a lot, <laughs> and a lot of restaurants like to call themselves the Wanjo or the original. Tikugi is, uh, is that from the, the back end? Uh, the, the, what is it? The, the back hind? The back leg of the moon? You would think it means back meat, right? Dweet Goki uh-huh. is translated to back meat, but it's actually a little bit different. Dweet Goki is the sort of off cuts of pork, usually oh. from the pork head. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming maybe uh, if you don't know the history of this, um, this is tied kind of directly to the Korean War. After the Korean War, protein was very scarce. So the butchers would actually take the small pieces of meat uh, that normally they wouldn't sell and they would sell it at the back door of the factory for kind of a cheaper price. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, th- I went right in with like the weird cuts of meat. I avoided samgipsa. I wanted to go a little <laughs> deeper. So we had a yontan, solmek, five-year aged kimchi, grilled minari, yomuguksu, kimchi jjigae. That was all night one, like welcome to Korea, basically. I, I mean, you just went in there, right? Uh, and uh, <laughs> if, if you've seen some of the places that, uh, what is it, uh, Austin goes to, it's not those fancy high-end restaurants i mean you were talking about the the hole in the wall the 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 neighborly places that's been around uh for quite a bit but i mean i have to say you know you never go wrong with korean barbecue despite True. whatever part uh but yarmuguksu uh being sort of the the radish ends uh, it's a, it's a noodle it's a it's like a kimchi made from the radish ends and then kimchi jjigae I mean, is he now kind of like adjusted to these tastes? Because for first timers, it's very sour, right? (laughs) Well, I mean, I was surprised. My brother is kind of a foodie. We grew up in the butcher shop together, basically. But he uh, he adjusted to it really well. He loved it. He I could see as the meal went on, he Mm -hmm. started to like it more and more and just open up. And uh, the kimchi jjigae was a highlight for him. He couldn't, you know, he he was this is amazing, amazing soup. And uh, yesterday he messaged me when he got back home. He said, I'm still thinking about that soup, man. <laughs> All right. So Daejeon, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a it's a underrated place, I have I to say. Agree. And uh, when I visited uh, Austin, uh, wow, almost two years ago now, you took me to your uh, Chokbar place, uh, the pig feet place. And I'm looking at the script here. You didn't take your brother there. Man, I'm so I had a limited amount of time. I'm telling you, like, so we went uh, we went for gamjatang, 
Mm-hmm. Which there's a really famous place called Ildang Gamjatang in my in Daejeon, which is really good. Um, and we also had Sogukbap, which is famous in Daejeon, um, Tapyong Sogukbap. But um, I think probably the most interesting interesting thing was fried chicken. So SJ, we actually plan to go to the Hanwha Eagles baseball game <laughs> and get some fried chicken, right? So that day, unfortunately, it was raining, so the game got canceled, which I'm really bummed about. But we ended up going to the fried chicken house, and then we played a game of screen baseball together. It just felt like a really nice Korean thing to do. I don't know. Screen baseball, fried chicken, and beer. Oh, absolutely. If you can't watch (laughs) baseball, play baseball yourself. And uh, I'm sure you were hitting just like the Hanwha Eagles are doing these days. Um, (laughs) I don't know, man. They're they're doing well these days. They're they're hanging in there. I'm su- I'm having fun watching them this year. So I I like. I mean, you know, you can't go wrong with uh, meat. Uh, but I like the fact that you went with kamjatang because yeah. uh, first day, for some reason, and, and my mom seems to be always seeking kamjatang or pyo uh, hejangguk and this like broth, uh, you know, hearty broth. Uh, especially yeah. when you're jet lagged, is this uh, particularly a reason for why you chose uh, kamjatang as the first kind of meal, one of the first meals? Of course, right. We had a lot of somek the night before. Uh, he was tired, but that kamjatang, you know, it just rejuvenates you. It yeah. makes your it just your soul comes back into your body, so to say. Um, yeah, he loved the kamjatang. You just see all these uh, bones and meat sticking out. It was one of his best meals, so I'm happy we went there. It was good. Daejeon, obviously your neck mm-hmm. of the woods. Uh, if you go slightly down south, uh, you're going to arrive in the uh, wonderful food city of Jeonju. Um, yeah. And uh, you've been to Jeonju before. You took him there. I, I, I need to know what kind of food uh, you uh, introduced yeah. him to. So, you know, Jeonju is just like a quick 50 minute drive from Daejeon. So I'm pretty familiar uh, with it. But we started off with. Uh, Bibimbap. I know I, I really wanted to show him Pisunde. I wanted to even challenge Man. myself to avoid the Bibimbap, but we had so Gukbap for breakfast in Dejan. I didn't want to get Gukbap and Gukbap, but it was good. Bibimbap was great. He loved it. You know it's what delicious. I did? You know, I went to Dej, uh, was it Chunju uh, a few months ago, and I was there for oh, two days, one night. I own, I must have only had Sunde Gukbap. <laughs> it's so good. That's all I did. That's all I had. I had a bottle of soju with a, a bowl of sunde, pisunde there. Oh, it's just amazing. And it's, amazing. Uh, I, it's, it's just, I've never had anything like this. I must have been like slightly tipsy 24 hours because of all the <laughs> drinks I had there. But I had soju. I found out later on that Chunju was also very famous for makgeolli. Um, and yes. I mean, it wasn't one of those places I was going to go by myself. Uh, there's a makgeolli town. Did you guys end up getting makgeolli? So there is a makgeolli gulmok, a makgeolli street. And I avoided the actual makgeolli street. People don't know that there's a second street in Jeonju that is more local. It's in the uh, Shinsondong area of Jeonju. And there's a lot of a lot of makgeolli houses in that area that more local people go to. Sure. So we took him there. We went to my favorite place. It's called Yechan Makgeolli. It's a really, really famous place. The original one is in Shinsondong. And man, I'm telling you, if you have a visitor in Korea or you're, you want to try a lot of different Korean food, you've got to go to these Makgeolli houses. It's just like piles of different foods like yeah. kimchi jim, ganjang gejang, jokba, topoki, or not topoki, tokgalbi, sorry, tokgalbi. Um, man, it's just endless. And we even had, believe it or not, I introduced Hongo Samap to <laughs> in Jeonju. I, you know, if you go to the Cholla region, you have to try Hongo. Um, exactly. How, what, what was his response to his fermented skates? You know, I was very surprised he tried it. I didn't think he would try it at all after smelling it. But he tried it and he said... I don't think I'll ever eat this again. <laughs> he, sw- he swallowed it. You know, some I've introduced this to some people and they can't swallow it. So I've got to give him kudos for that. Right? Uh, yeah, it's 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 a pungent, pungent <laughs> uh, food. But I, I wonder if it was the first time he's had makgeolli or he's had it before yes, during it. Was time. it? I, I yeah. mean, 
you know, non-Koreans love makgeolli. I mean, it, you know, there's no bitterness to it. It's sweet. Uh, it goes down smooth, uh, but uh, the next day it just kills you. Uh, <laughs> you've hit Daejeon. You've gone to Jeonju. What was your next destination? So we drove then through Jirisan, and you know it's springtime. It's April. We wanted to get bom namu, some spring vegetables. And uh, there's a great little restaurant called called Dargung Shikdang. I think I might have talked to about you did to yeah, it yeah 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 sh- on the show a while ago. But um, man, it's great for pajan, some smoked black pig. Uh, they actually grill the hukdweji using firewood, so it's get this like smoky smell on it. Yeah, I so love we- that stuff. I mean, once you start. Um, Getting the, uh, the, you know, was it moving out of charcoal and then you go into the firewood. It's just completely yes. different kind of uh, smokiness uh, to the meat. But you hit up Chirisan and you had meat and then you go all the way to Busan. Now, Busan's a yeah. tough one because, <laughs> I, I mean, there's so, such a variety of food you can go. Are you going to go towards the, the, the seafood route or are you going to go towards the... The, the meat route or the soup yeah. route? I mean, what'd you do? Uh, what was the first food you guys had in Busan? So, you know, as I mentioned, we grew up in the butcher shop together. I have all these memories with me and my grandpa on him at the butcher shop. So maybe you can guess I focused more on the meat side. And we were walking through one of the Susan, one of the markets with all the fish, the fish markets. Mm-hmm. And I could see on his face, he was a little worried that I was going to start having him, you know, eating some sanakchi and things like that. Right. So I took pity on my brother. Um, actually, I, I want to mention before we do that, the first thing we did eat was dwechi gukbap. Ah, uh, you have to. How to eat dwechi gukbap in Busan. Right? Uh, you have to. You have to. I mean, it's 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 different. Uh, the, it's amazing. <laughs> it's the, the broth is just so, it's almost thick. Yes. You know, it's just a next level taste for him. Um I wonder though, because you've, I, I noticed that uh, you've done, I mean, all the videos that you've done, you've done a lot of Honga stuff, right? But I noticed that you don't do a whole lot of seafood stuff other than Honga. Uh, I wonder if you guys kind of took on the, the seafood uh, tour in Busan. So, yeah, I mean, for me, I love seafood. I love Hue. I love, uh, you know, uh, ma- not mara tongue. I mean, uh, <laughs> mayun tongue. Sorry, mayun tongue. I'm all about seafood, but I just knew my brother might not be into it. So, actually, I kind of uh, went. I, I really wanted to test him. I was like, if you're not going to eat seafood, then I'm going to show you something really special. And maybe, okay. maybe some of our listeners don't know about this. I'm not sure about you, SJ, but um, if you go around Jigalchi Market, the main market there in Busan, there's these little tiny alleyways. And they're serving something called yang gopchang. That's right. Are you yeah. with yang gopchang? Oh, of course. It's a must. I, I love intestines. I mean, yes. that's I, that's must eat. However, <laughs> I I don't know where because some people say that they they, they taste the, uh, the the gaminess uh, of uh, the intestines. Um, people aren't big fans of it. I can't taste it. I can't smell it. Was your brother big on the uh, the yang gopchang? Believe it or not, and this really shocked me, he says that was his best meal he had in South Korea, oh, was wow. the Busan Yang Gopchang. He, I mean, it, it is quite special, right? So, you know, Yang Gopchang, the reason it's called Yang is it's from the first stomach of the cow, which is white colored. It's mm-hmm. not darker colored. And Yang meaning white, like a, like a sheep. So some people see the sign and they think, oh, it must be lamb intestines, like yang goki, right. but it's actually beef, uh, hanu beef. And um, yeah, he absolutely loved it. You In these places in Busan, you go in and you sort of pick a stall mm-hmm. and sit in front of it. And um, we just had an amazing meal. So he, he loved it. Oh, man, this is tough uh, listening to this. It just happens to be like one of my favorite foods out there. And then, you know, you just uh, endless bottles of soldier that comes with it and of course to end the trip uh, you went from (laughs) all the way from Busan all the way to Seoul was the final destination again uh, it's hard to kind of pinpoint uh, foods to kind of pick here in uh, Seoul because you have a diverse uh, diversity Uh, what were some of the things that you guys checked out so I think that's the best thing about Seoul is you can find, you know, all the different kinds of, fo- of foods. But for me, 
Uh, Soul specializes in just a few of them, and one that comes to my mind is Solong Tang. Yep. I feel like the best Solong Tang I've had in Korea is in Seoul. So that was the first thing we had. We went to Imun Solong Tang, which is the oldest restaurant, the oldest registered restaurant in Korea. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we had Dolgani Tang, Solong Tang, oh. and uh, Suyuk Muchim with Soju. It was great. But this is a must go destination if you have any visitors outside of Korea and uh, still one of my favorite places to visit. I wish I lived uh, a bit closer to this place. Gwangjang Market, uh, made famous also because of uh, a certain Netflix series. You guys ended up going there, right? Yeah, so actually now for me, and maybe you'll agree with this, SJ, Gwangjang these days can be hit or miss. Absolutely. I think it's gotten so popular yeah. that it's a little bit overhyped and there might be some stalls that are... Anyways, we don't need to go into that. Um, I still recommend anybody visiting Korea, you have to put Gwangjang Shijang, Gwangjang Market on your list. But if you want to go somewhere a little bit more unique about... Uh, you know, just a few meters away, there's actually a Dak Hanmari alleyway. That's Dak right. Hanmari. Yeah. And uh, for me, when you go there, uh, there's no tourists there. It's all local Korean people. Every time I go there, I swear, every time I go there, somebody buys me a beer. A local Korean <laughs> person buys me a beer and I, they're just happy that I'm there. So... I don't know. <laughs> I have to say, takamari is like one of the most simple foods out there, yes. um, but it tastes so delicious. I, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of boiled chicken. I like fried chicken, but yeah. it's it's a must. Uh, it's a must-have food, and especially you can make your own kind of uh, sauce here. Very quickly, uh, your visit, uh, your travel uh, around uh, all of Korea with your brother it just sounded so amazing. But if someone had to have a one-week itinerary, they want to experience Korean food, like, how, would you recommend this particular route uh, that you took? Yeah, actually, I have I have a lot of ideas and tips, and maybe in future episodes, we can kind of talk about some itineraries, because I've noticed on social media these days, a lot of the Korean food social media, they've been saying things like, this is my one week itinerary in Korea. And then they only leave Seoul for Busan for one day, yeah, right? Yeah. Their, their whole time is in Seoul. Um, I mean, we catered this trip to the cherry blossoms. So if I were to change something, you know, I would take people to Mokpo. Mokpo is actually very accessible from Seoul by the KTX. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, the best food in Korea is in that area. Mokpo is uh, something I would definitely add. Yeah, and uh, you know you know what they say, uh, you can't go wrong with uh, Chola food, right? You go to Absolutely. any place in Chola province, the food is always going to be good. Austin, I'm glad you had a fantastic trip with your brother, Aaron, and uh, I'm sure all of our listeners right now complain about how hungry they are because of this particular <laughs> segment. Austin, thanks again as always, buddy, and uh, looking forward to talking to you again next month. All right, see you next time, SJ. Thank you. You can listen to Korea Now with me, SJ Lee, by downloading the Arirang Radio application or tune in online by visiting www.arirangradio.com. So make sure you tune in Mondays through Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Korea time.